We want to encourage you to name your children in a way your heavenly daddy's love flows mm. and his righteousness flows even right into the very core of their being, into their name. You know, there's just something about a name, isn't there? And each of us have been given names by our parents. And, you know, m most of us never had a choice about our name, right, mm -hmm. honey? Yeah. And, you know, if, if, if you've been given a name that you like or you don't like or, you know, whatever, you don't really have much choice about it. So you kind of feel like you're stuck with it. Yeah, or you use your middle name or you change your name slightly. You know, yeah. like I've shortened my name from Catherine to Kate. Yeah, and I love her name, Catherine, but Kate always likes to be called Kate. And so you sometimes call me Kath. Yes, and I'm, I'm Duncan, Dunk, Dunks, Never ever Dunky. <laughs> no. Or <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts. Or, yeah, well, Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, America runs on Dunkin'. Uh -huh. So, I mean, you know, yeah. it's one of those things my whole life in yeah. America for 20 something years. That's right. Uh, I've been teased about being called Dunkin' Donuts. But, you know, there we go. And, you know, my name, Kate Smith. Um, somebody said to me when we first came to America, oh, she's a famous singer. She sang God Bless America and there's a star in Hollywood with your name. And I'm like, okay, Kate Smith is here to bless America. Yeah, and, and so, we get to yeah. Hollywood and see that star yeah. in the sidewalk and we have to take a picture That's with right, Kate next to Kate Smith. I mean, yeah. it, it's awesome. But, you know, here we were last Christmas, just a, you know, a couple months ago, and... We're sitting down and we had one of Kate and I's favorite friend, longest friends, because I went to university with Kathy Jones, who has been single her whole adult life. And she fell in love with Alan and Eileen Vincent's son, Duncan Vincent, and married him. When was it? Like yeah, November, November, November last year. So for the first, she comes with, over to America every year for the very first time yeah. she comes over as Mrs. Kathy Vincent. Married to a Duncan. So it's Kate and Duncan and Kathy and Duncan. So we've kind of made jokes about this and how and, fun it is. And so here's, you know, it's Duncan and well, I had to become Dunk so that he could be Duncan because he doesn't like being called Dunk. So I don't mind being called Dunk. He's Duncan. And so there we are at Christmas and family all around and my mum and dad are there. And my mum and dad, were, my father was having a really good conversation uh, with Duncan. And he said to Duncan, so why are you Duncan? And Duncan said, well, my mum and dad named me Duncan after Duncan Campbell, the great revivalist from 1949 to 1952, the Scotland Hebridean Revival, <laughs> which is a very, very famous revival. And you know, deep down inside, I've always secretly hoped that somehow I was named after Duncan Campbell. Yeah. And in fact, uh, when we first went to Toronto in May 2000, some um, a prophet prophesied mm -hmm. over me that I was a revivalist like Duncan Campbell. And the Holy Spirit hit me so hard and uh, I got blasted. But I've never really been able to confidently say I was named after Duncan Campbell. And for some reason, it never occurred to me to ask my parents. I just never thought of it. Well, Duncan Vincent says, yeah, my parents named me after Duncan, Duncan Campbell. And my dad, to my complete astonishment, in front of me, I'm just listening on the side, says, oh yes, we named our son Duncan after Duncan Campbell too. And I'm like, what? Why when? have you never told me, <laughs> Bob and Dad? You know, I've been quiet all these years. And, and Dad says, yes, and we also named you Duncan after Duncan Mitchell, Reverend Duncan Mitchell of the Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland. Yeah. And uh, of the Free Church of Presbyterian Church of Scotland, who's a friend of theirs, and, and dad stayed with them for six months while he was at university in Scotland. And so, well, this really impacted me. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt like the Holy Spirit was just 
confirming mm. something that deep in my heart yeah. I've longed for because Kate also has a story yeah. about her name. So my full name is Catherine and on all my legal documents, my driving license, my passports, um, anything official, I'm Catherine. So I get introduced in doctor's office as, you know, Catherine and most of my friends and family call me Kate. So I've got feel like I've got two names sometimes. But my name is spelt with a K, K A T H R Y N. And it's it's actually not the English way to to spell it. Usually it's a, a C and it's got an E R I N E. And so I was always like confused. Why did my parents give me an unusual spelling to my name? Because you're always having to tell people how to spell Catherine because otherwise they do it a different way. And my parents told me, well, we named you after Catherine Coleman. And so even as a young girl, I knew I was named after Catherine I Coleman. Love that, honey. And I've always been interested in her life and uh, you know, heard and seen um, videos about her. Coleman, honey? She was a revivalist in America in the 60s, 50s, 60s. I think yeah, she 70s. passed away. I forget where she passed away. But she made an impact in the nation of the US and f- further afield because my parents were hungry, seeking the Holy Spirit in at that time. And, um, and so Catherine Coleman was one of those ministers at the time. And what is amazing is that I find out that John and Carol Arner followed Catherine Coleman as well, that she was a significant person. Extremely significant. It's amazing how that name has kind of tied us together in our calling for revival. And even just hearing that you were named after Duncan Campbell. Oh, come on, honey. 22 years after receiving that prophecy yeah. about you being a revivalist like yeah. Duncan Campbell. Yeah. And so we really want to talk about our names So, today. you know, it's for us, it's very special to realize that we were both named mm. after great revivalists. Mm. But... Not everybody no. can have a story to say, hey, wow, I'm no. I'm named after, you know, uh, some great revivalist. Or and, a famous person. Or a famous person mm-hmm. or whatever. And we've come to the conclusion that there's greatness for all of us yeah. in Jesus. Yeah. And the reality of no matter what our start, no matter who our parents named us, what our parents yeah. named us, we each now actually have an amazing revival story in our true name. And we'll come to that in just a moment. And I want to, you know, I woke up this morning and, I, and Kate and I had been thinking about doing this uh, video about our names, our names, not just our names, but our names, all of us. And I woke up this morning thinking about it. And I was reading in my scripture reading for the for the day today as I working through the Bible in a year, I realized that uh, I wanted to look up Levi and what his name means and where he was in the birth order. I couldn't remember if he was second oldest, third oldest of Jacob's sons. And, uh, and so I looked it up and I saw that his name, Levi, means attached, that I'm finally attached. And um, I quickly had a look in, uh, in, in right there in Genesis, uh, where the story of those births, Genesis 29, the last few verses of Genesis 29, and Leah is the is Jacob's wife that Laban tricked him into having because he really was in love with Rachel, who was the second eldest daughter, but and was promised that if he gave seven years of hard work, he would be able to marry Rachel. But in reality, Jacob tricked him and he ended up marrying Leah. When he woke up, he found out, I'm married to Leah. Yeah. And so he had to work another seven years for Rachel, although yeah. Laban kindly gave him Rachel after a week. Yeah. But so he was able to work those last seven years married, but he had to be married to both of those ladies. And Leah, was hated by Jacob. The Bible actually says, when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, Mm -hmm. 
The Lord gave Leah a son, and she gave birth to Reuben, the eldest. And Reuben means a son. She was like, wow, I've got a son. Finally, my husband might love me. And she was thinking about herself. Secondly, she had another son. She named him Simeon. Oh, the Lord's heard me. She's still thinking about herself. Then thirdly, she has a third son, Levi. Oh, I'm going to call him a Levi, which means attached. Finally, my husband will feel attached to me. Yeah. She's still naming him about out of her own circumstances. And then fourthly, her fourth son, she calls Judah, which means praise. Yeah. And for the first time, she realizes it's not about me anymore. I'm not, I don't want to name my son about my circumstances and the struggles I'm going through. I'm going to name my son after the Lord and I'm going to call him praise. Mm -hmm. And something happened in Leah's heart between her third son, Levi, yeah. and her fourth son, Judah, where suddenly she got the revelation, life is not about me, no matter what my circumstances, life is really about God and how my life brings him glory. And I'm going to call my fourth son, I'm going to call him praise because yeah. Jesus, God is worthy wow. of my praise, no matter what my circumstances. And I think it's fascinating, Kate, that, that Jesus is in the lineage yeah, of Judah, which so means true. praise. And he's the lion of the tribe of Judah in Revelation, the lion of the tribe of praise in Revelation. And so we see that this whole uh, shift of heart where she names her son Praise, yeah. ushers in a whole lineage that ultimately Jesus is yeah. in the tribe of Praise. So good. And we're in Christ Jesus. We are in his name. Yeah. The Father has given us a new name and scripture yeah. talks about us being given our own secret, unique name in wow. him. It's Come like on. when we're born again, he redeems our identity. Yeah. And it, you know, a, child that is called or named after somebody's pain in childbirth is not a, a name to carry. And many of us, when we're born again, we're born again into a redeemed nature, yeah. a redeemed name Come on. where he is in us and we take on all his identity and his characteristics, so whether we're the firstborn, the secondborn, or, you know, the child that came, you know, unexpectedly. Nothing is wasted because he knows us by name. And, yeah, you I know, love that, honey. And, and when, Psalm too, Psalm 139, that he saw us when yeah. we were being formed. He knew our days yeah. and he knew how our story yeah. was going to unfold in him. Yeah, and we're going to enter into the inheritance of a new name. That's right. A Jesus name rather than yeah. an Adamic name. And, you know, like Kate said, you know, whether you were... Uh, your parents named you after someone great or whether your parents named you out of the pain of their circumstances. You know, I think about Jabez mm -hmm. and how Jabez means pain, mm -hmm. but he was determined, I'm not actually, even though I've been named pain, yeah. I'm actually not going to be identified right. out of my pain. And the Lord blessed Jabez yeah. because he chose not to walk in the identity of pain, yeah. but to walk in his identity mm -hmm. in God. Yeah. And, uh, and I just think whether you were named after someone great, after a great revivalist, and if you were, fantastic. And if you were named after someone great in the world, fantastic, that's awesome. But if you were named somewhat after circumstances, mm. negative circumstances, yeah. and your very name, you look it up after watching this and you realize, oh no, I've been named pain or struggle yeah. or some, you know, poverty or something, some awful negative uh, uh, meaning in your name. Mm. Let me just, or maybe you've even been named, you discover after some false god and you're carrying that name. I just want you to know the whole purpose of mm. this is to know that all of our names, whether named after someone great or all of our names out of the least or whatever, yeah. those are all Adamic names. Yeah. And in Jesus, yeah. every one of us have his name, 
we're in him, we have his last name now, and he has a new name for each of us that we're going to inherit in our new bodies that are just waiting for us on the other side. What's of his glory. last name? Is it Christ? Yeah, Anointed Jesus Christ. One. Mm -hmm. Anointed one. That's so awesome, love. Yeah. We have his last That's name. Right. And we're the little anointed ones. That's what Christian actually means, is That's little right. anointed ones. So yeah. you're right, we already have his name. So we bless you today yeah. to see the redemption in your name yeah. and your identity and allow Jesus and his union with you, his strength in you, his love in you to yeah. actually transform and redeem your story. Yeah, because God cool. knows all your days yeah. and he's got great things for each yeah. of you. We just have to believe. Yeah. So, you know, so. I'm so glad that my mum and dad named me Duncan after yeah. Duncan Campbell. Yeah. Uh, Duncan means brown warrior. Yeah. And I love that, you know. You've got a warrior spirit. Shika Banga, you honey. And, you know, Kate is named Catherine. Pure. Which means pure. And we named our own daughters yes. with a biblical um, and a, a spiritual meaning to yeah. them. And yeah. they've become what we named yeah, them, actually. Yeah, we named, we named Jesse. I wanted to name Jesse, Jesse. Mm -hmm. But Kate always felt like, well, let's let's name her uh, Jessica and she can be Jesse or Jess. And, and Jessica means God beholds. And we found out later, it was your grandmother's middle name. That's true. So that was another yes. nice gesture. And Jesse means God exists. And so then we named her middle name Faith. And she's a woman of faith, always yes, has been, always she has. will. Yeah. And our middle daughter, Abigail Grace, she is that her name means father's joy. Oh, and she's full that. of grace and grace has been in her life and the joy of the father has been over her yeah, life. Yeah. yeah, so true. And then Nathania, uh Joy, which Nathania is an unusual name, and Nathania uh means gift of God. Yeah. And we, she was a surprise to Kate and I. Yeah. We weren't expecting to have her. She's only 14 months younger than Abigail Grace. And so when she came, it was a real shock to us when we found out we were pregnant. Mm -hmm. And right away we knew she's a gift from God. So we wanted to name her something that meant gift from God. And we found she her name. has brought so much joy to yes, our life too. Yes, she so, really has. You know, it's amazing how you can name your child and yeah. they actually become, because God has spoken to you about yeah. their name ahead of time. Yeah. And he loves to give us names that we actually like yeah. too. Yeah. So, you so know. We, we just want to say, guys, you know, for those of you late millennials, and uh, Gen Z's, definitely all of you Gen Z's that are going to be coming into quite soon one day, you know, it doesn't take long before you'll be at the stage we were when we were blessed to have children yeah. and we were blessed to be able to have that opportunity, that amazing opportunity to give them a name. Yeah. And uh, we want to encourage you to name your children in a way where the your heavenly daddy's love flows mm. and his righteousness flows even right into the very core of their being, into their name, by giving them a name that's an awesome, yes. awesome name. So true. With great destiny that they can become, you know? Yeah. Our heavenly daddy has a great name over each of us. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you really enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on that notifications button. Also, click on the links below. We have lots of resources for you to enjoy that we believe will help you to live an amazing supernatural life in the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless. See you next time.